the the two politicians and which two i mean there's a lot <laughs> are, about when i tell my daughter that i'm gonna be live on the radio she's going <laughs> on facebook and i went no on the radio babe. Well, well, how do i get it? i said it's it's on the radio in your car it's not live on facebook it's like or she can download the KLIN 1400 app. Okay. Or the Ugly Motel Live. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, it's just KLIN 1400. It'll pop right up. She can open it and whatever we're playing, she can. Okay, I will. <laughs> you know, difference between being 22 and, right. you know. Okay. So uh, I wouldn't, I would not, I wouldn't say like, okay, there we how go. am I going to describe this? So I have a couple of friends that are staunch Republicans, and okay. they're they're like retired businessmen. So they're definitely in the potential donation group. Right. I would say in Lincoln, Nebraska, in like the eighty percent mark. Okay. You know they're not Sandhills Publishing, sure. if you will, but they've done well, and and they care, and they have houses in California. So they've called me recently, and the, because they're staying there for the winter, and they're like, "Hey, how's the mayor's race going? What's going on?" Right. I go. Um, they go, no, seriously, what's going on? I go, nothing. Yep. They're like, how can that be? Yep. And I go, I don't know. See, that, 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 that's the frustration. Like, again, nobody even, like, so when I started talking to people about it, I was like, okay, so no offense to, um, um, oh, He's a friend of mine, even. Dang it. Uh, who ran for mayor last time for the Republican Party? Um, You're talking about a lady? Yeah. Um, I know. Who? Now, now that I'm... I know who you're talking about. Life. We just talked about her yesterday. Dang it. The little lawyer. Yes. She was a very nice lady. Cindy Lamb. Cindy Lamb. Oh, my gosh. I, I, I see the lady, like, once a month. I, I swear. I'm a horrible person. Um, but anyhow, so, again... I didn't even realize that it was going on. It's somebody that's like highly invested in like my businesses are in Lincoln, my real estate's now all in Lincoln. I mean, I, I used to have them in, in Washington, like right across the sound from Seattle. I used to have them in Columbus, Seward. Now everything's in Lincoln. I, I, I have to like micro down into Lincoln and I hate it because now when they raise the taxes, everything gets raised. <laughs> you know, there's no, there's nothing. But so I didn't know that there was actually even a campaign going on last time. And no offense, again, Sorry, you know, um, we got the same thing going on right now. And the issue is you see the billboards. You can definitely tell that Suzanne has got some money behind her, and I think that's great. She can't... Here's here's another quick thing. So out of the two people, um, I, I did the, the live stream with, with Stan, right? And I, I'd say you're a Stan supporter, right? Probably. Yes, probably, yeah. yeah. And, um, and Suzanne actually came into the Ugly Motel, and she mm -hmm. talked to me, and so that was great. And... Um, even better, she talked to my wife on, on like a Facebook live stream type thing or whatever. Okay. And my wife is the intelligent person out of the two of us, right? Okay. She's the person who actually pays attention to the fine details. I'm more of the reaction type person, you know? And so she's got a really good plan. She's got, she's got ideas that make sense, I guess, to small business owners. And I guess that can relate to me. But here's my real question. Um... I, I think that, like, I feel like in in Lincoln, Republicans and Democrats are split 50-50. Mm -hmm. I don't think that anybody actually knows what issues they're split over that a mayor can actually affect, you know? Because, again, whether you're for or against abortion, mayor's not going to change that, you know? Whether you're for or against, I don't know, gay rights, again, right. mayor's not going to change that. <laughs> so, I mean, what is the mayor going to do to change your life? And... You know, again, my my big qualm with uh, with the current mayor, uh, she doesn't return my emails, so that's not very nice. She doesn't return my pokes on Twitter. That's not. She follows my wife on Twitter, but she doesn't follow me, so that's frustrating. So it's like, um, okay. But Stan was inspired to run for mayor because of what happened with Ben Madsen. Okay, here. During COVID. Okay, so tell me a little bit about Stan. Why? So why? I don't know a lot about Stan. Okay. So I don't know a lot. Okay, so I guess we're coming from the same place as far as like. Um, there's a frustration. I feel like that there's a lot of business owners, people that are my age, 34, 35, young entrepreneurs, if you will. You know, I bought my hotel at 25. So a lot of chaos, a lot of, a lot of craziness. And now I'm looking at, okay, what are the tax ramifications of putting all my money in this instead of a job, you know? And I guess the question is, now I care a little bit about politics, sure. just a little bit, you know, and what can the mayor, what can the mayor change? What can, what can she do to help me instead of raise the taxes? Um, and I think the, I think the big, big challenge needs to happen. I think that 
Um, I think they need to get on social media, period. I mean, one thing that... Uh, <laughs> I mean, one, one thing that... Uh, what's her name? The the current mayor. Um, 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 yeah, yeah. So I'll just give you the names. That's thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So she's doing a great job, at least making the paper. She went and did the the, the smile media thing with the waste the, the waste plan. She went and did the the smile meet and greet with the people that are fixing the potholes finally, which is again kind of a joke in Lincoln. Again, we we, we spent all this money on our tire taxes and yeah. potholes everywhere, but um, well, it had an additional tax to go along with it to help fix that. Right. Right. So Do you know that the uh, that tax that everybody voted for that um, actually the city engineers don't decide how to fix the roads. They have a, essentially a council. I didn't know that. by the mayor of citizens like you and I. Right. That you can imagine what their leanings are. Right. And they decide where that tax money goes. So, for instance, a good example would be. The roads right here, um, 40, 45, 46, 47, mm -hmm. have all been repaved, right? Right, and I'm not saying they didn't need to be repaved, right. but if you go down our major thoroughfares, right. so what would a logical business person, tax person like you are, you are a steward of the taxpayers' dollars, and so you're supposed to try to get biggest bang for the buck, right? to affect good for the most people. Right. Now, that's not to say you ostracize neighborhoods that, you know, are poor. Right. No. Right. However, Which he's done a lot down in the hood, because my, my son right. lives in the hood, like right. around 14th, right. 15th. So, yeah. so the point is, is how can 84th, 70th, O Street... Cornhusker Highway. Yeah, just keep going. The <laughs> yeah. major thoroughfares, how can those be second, third, fifth priority to, like, these roads right, right here? Right. Just from a traffic standpoint. Right. Like, and so, but, I mean, if you dig a little deeper, you'll see that the mayor has done a lot of that, which clearly some people believe in that whole equity, like, oh, I'm getting to have a say. Right. One, it gives her a cutout if things go wrong. She can be like, well, that's what the council said. Right. Two, yeah, she's very good at what I call the the poster board, right? I mean, right. she takes the picture. She goes up for the COVID thing. Right. Um, you have to look a little deeper, and that's unfortunately what we try to do on this show is to help people look a little deeper and, sure, you know, what are the effects. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we'll talk about it all. We're actually going live now. She's, well, we she's been well taught. <laughs> I don't know how many people are actually going to see it live on the actual YouTube, but we'll see. All right, folks, Thursday, February 16th, uh, well, snow day, I guess. Uh, by all accounts, uh, everybody I know, myself included, our predictions were wrong. I said 3.5 inches, and uh, by most of the professional weather guessers, it's somewhere between 9 and 11 here in Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> Uh, this is Drive Time Lincoln. I'm your host, Jack Riggins, restoring American values, bringing common sense to the capital city. Johnny Cadillac is executive producing the show. We did make it in. Um, and yeah, what a snow day. Everybody's just digging out. So there we go. Uh, we've got an, a real interesting show today because uh, I always try to say this is a people's platform. And oftentimes you just don't know if, quote unquote, the people will take you up <laughs> on it. Uh, but Actually, we finally got that done. Uh, we've got Paul Holt, otherwise known as the Ugly Motel on YouTube, and a businessman. We're going to introduce him in a second. He'll tell his story because you're like, who is this guy? Well, he'll tell you. And we've got <laughs> Lynette in, both concerned Lincolnites, regular people. Um, and th they were just like, hey, we'll come on the show. I'm like, come on the show. Didn't didn't expect you guys to have to come in on an 11-inch snow day, but welcome both of you to Drive Time Lincoln. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you very much. It. Yeah. Uh, Paul. Get a little closer to the microphone. Okay. I know you're a big YouTube guy. Okay. Um, All right. Real quick, let's start with you just so the audience, some will know you, some will not. But okay. you, you've you really, as a young person, I say that, a young man, uh, you've done well in small business. And, you know, most recently, I know you from purchasing the old Holiday Inn out on Cornhusker Highway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I, I don't know if I'd say I've done well. I've done a lot of interesting things. Um so a little bit about my background. Uh, joined the Navy submarine force right out of high school. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> love it. Um, then straight out of that, went to UNL, graduated in two and a half years, and uh, went up to, to Columbus, Nebraska. My wife uh, was a DCE intern, uh, director of Christian education, and uh, she told me to get a job. So I said, okay, I'll get a job. And uh, me being kind of an interesting, you know, I've been buying properties at that point, mind you, since I was 18. So I bought 
uh, one, two, and then a fourplex, and I think we just bought another house. So long story short, I go and try and see if I could buy this hotel at 25, as it's you like do. It's Monopoly. It, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I had four <laughs> houses. I needed a hotel, and that was the joke. And so I put I put everything on collateral. I tried to see if I can if I can actually do that. Um, if you want to see the full story, check us out, uh, The Ugly Motel on YouTube. Um, we're actually live right now. Um, but yeah, so that's what I did. So I bought this, this hotel, this ancient hotel that... So I went to UNL. I, I, my experience with Lincoln, Nebraska... My house was on the south side of Lincoln. Um, I went to UNL, loved the experience there. Did not know so much about Northeast Lincoln. Did not know so much about the history of this hotel, just that I could get financing for it, and that was cool. Okay. And it was massive. And for a guy with ADHD who likes doing interesting things, <laughs> this was the thing. You know? And don't forget a former submariner, which right. makes you <laughs> in a very special class of, of military we, men and women. We do not give up. And that's the other thing, too. I mean, it's been 10 years now, and it's just... I don't care what obstacle we face. Um, it, again, if you know me from, from YouTube, you might know that uh, at the start of the pandemic, right before uh, all the, the chaos happened, you guys can say pandemic, right? I, you I get, can. I can't. I, you, I didn't say You can't? You can say pandemic. Well, on YouTube, you get... You get really? Yeah, you get, get in trouble, you get smacked. But oh, wow. Well, there anyhow. you go, folks. I mean, we are uncovering nationwide now all the censorship <laughs> that's been going on. You just don't know who it's affected. Okay, gotcha. Fair. So, so, so during the plague. So during the plague, yeah. yeah. The plague. Let's so go with that. At the start of that, I, I got this notice. Hey, look, you got you got thirty days, uh, and you're gonna die. And I'm like, what? What? Um, so my hands are going numb. What the heck's going on? Uh, we just so happened to have just moved to St. Louis again. Wife's dream job, and so we just moved to St. Louis, and my my hands are going numb. Just so happens that there is this world renowned uh, neurologist there, and he's like, you're an interesting guy. Let me talk to you. Dr. House, basically. And I was like, if, if yeah. you follow that channel. Um, anyhow, so... Great show, yeah, by the way. Yeah, so they, they tell me, hey, look, you got uh, this this really strange-looking issue going on with your spine. You need surgery now or you're going to die. And at the same time, then, the you know, the world comes to an end. So um, do the surgery. So you had a couple pandemics going yeah, on. Yeah, we had, wow. we've been, we, yeah. We, and, of course, we just had a newborn baby, I, I think. Well, congrats. Uh, yeah, so thanks. We have three now, so... And they were being so selective about who was even getting surgery you're lucky you got surgery at that point so i i was like i was like 10 days before like they officially started going like nuts on things so mm -hmm. i was like yeah we, we we got in just in time you know again thank the lord that you know things happen just so they happen you know at the time we're like but he's gonna die if he this isn't good and i was like well i'm gonna finish my house and i'm flipping and then i'll do my <laughs> surgery and <You're> a capitalist. <laughs> right <laughs> yeah so i mean long story short we started this this YouTube channel basically chronicling, you know, the the the, the whole experience of getting shut down and then what we did to remodel it. Mm -hmm. We got picked by Wyndham, which is, you know, again, nationwide or yeah. worldwide, you know, uh, big deal. Something I've been working on for a while. But so they said, hey, we'll take you on and uh, you have to meet X, Y and Z, obviously. And so we started doing that. And yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot more little things in between. I, I owned a bar. I had a limo thing. I had a. Uh, I used to drop ship for a while. I mean, a lot of it's little safe random to things. Say that you, one, <laughs> thanks for your service to the country. As a yeah. Navy man, uh, the for submarine sure. services are really cool. It's 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 just a different service. And every time I got lucky enough to go on board, I felt literally like a fish out of water. <laughs> um, but folks, I can't say enough again. I mean, it is our probably our most honestly secret service, and uh, the men and women that do it are a special breed. Uh, not just for what they do, but really they're 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 their brains and their ability to think quick on their feet. And, uh, sure. it's, it's a pretty cool little culture. So I didn't even know you were part of the <laughs> subservice before you came in here. Nice. Um, but it sounds to me like you're almost like a serial entrepreneur. You're always trying to create things, think of things, kind of do it your own way. Yeah, yeah. A little setback with the medical thing. I'm assuming that's all worked out. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. So I, I'm technically paralyzed. So whatever, you know, <laughs> okay. and the doctor's like, why are you moving? And I'm like, well, I, I have to, I, I need to fix things. Right. So, you know, um, and, so I guess that's kind of on hiatus. I did a keto diet that yeah. shrunk this weird tumor that I had. And, I'll be dang. And it's like, okay, well, that works. Whatever. Yeah. No more surgery. Yeah, whatever um, works, right? <laughs> whatever works. So and then, then we had to start making all the money to keep the, 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 the this massive beast of a hotel yeah. going, you know. Yeah, because how many how many rooms, it, I mean, well, so it's, it, before it's, you remodeled it? It's I mean, a seven-acre, um, 163 room hotel, old yeah. holodome, right? Yeah. And so... I had to really kind of work hand in hand with the city and say, okay, well, what can I do? What can I do that would not require, you know, freaking everybody out, you know, but make sure that we are not subject to random shutdowns and random right. whatever, you know? And so 
you know, I'm, I'm really thankful for the city for working with me through that. But, um, yeah, so we split things up. We made a 28-plex out of 55 okay. rooms. And then we took the uh, the main hotel. We turned the outside 55 into uh, travel lodge and then the inside 55 to be determined. Okay. Uh, we're currently working, working on a ballroom. My goal is to be the most affordable meeting space. It's not going to be the prettiest yet. Again, it's the ugly motel, yeah. but it'll be an affordable space. Yeah. And uh, I just bought a TARDIS, so that's fun, you know. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> if you know what that is, it, it, it's a joke about the holodome also in itself. But long story short, lots of little things in there. Started up the, the U-Haul company, started up the uh, storage stuff, started up uh, the snow removal thing, which I just wow. got done doing today. There you go. And so, I mean, busy busy year. Yeah, you know? busy. Well, you're, you're out there working. Yeah. Now, real quick, I mean, I, listen, folks, the holodomes of yesteryear... Um, I, you know, a kid growing up in the eighties, um, I can tell you that when you got to go to a holodome, you thought yes. you were in the kingdom of heaven right. for a kid on a vacation, right. um, uh -huh. whether it be in Grand Island, I think they had one out there, yep. uh, here. I mean, uh, years gone by. So I'm, I'm appreciative that you're doing something with the holodome in the back. Let me get to Lynette real quick. Lynette, concerned citizen. You came in as well. Want to give any, anybody in the audience some background or thoughts to kick this off because i know we're going to talk about really we'll get into just thoughts about government in in the area lincoln lancaster county and what's going on with politics just from the average citizen you know when we get there but sure tell us about yourself as we like to say in the navy well i'm i'm not quite as much of a serial entrepreneur as uh, as paul is you know i grew up with my grandfather being um, a farmer so i've always kind of been in that entrepreneurial background but i didn't really think about that growing up i wanted to be good at what i did i could type fast so i became a secretary no okay. one told me i wasn't going to make any money so then i decided to get into sales um but did well in that but i also then started thinking hey if i get married and have kids how's that gonna work with balance and the short version of that is i had a very successful direct sales career for over 30 years and I did it because I wanted to be successful in mm -hmm. both business and life. Yeah. Um, life fell apart. I did something different for, um, and took a corporate job in payment processing, became an expert at that, straight commission. Again, I've always done straight commission or right. self-employed. And uh, But the one common thing I found was there were all these small business owners and entrepreneurs who didn't get to live the life that I was living as a business owner. Mm -hmm. And it broke my heart. Yeah. Um, the, the moms couldn't go to the kids' school programs. You know, they, they felt guilty if they were staying home. Um, right. My son's a type 1 diabetic. He was diagnosed at 10. I had the flexibility to be at the hospital, not have to ask anybody's permission. Sure. And why do you become an entrepreneur in the first place? Yeah. To have the freedom and flexibility. <laughs> yeah. So um, during the, I call it the pandemic, but um, during the <laughs> pandemic, um, I said, this is my opportunity to grow my coaching business. So I've created a coaching business called Chaos to Boss. Okay. So people know me as the boss lady. There you go. And I have a lot of skill sets I knew I could teach business owners, but if I couldn't help them take their life back and take their control and be able to have some semblance of organization and, and be able to have the free, some of that freedom and flexibility back, then there's no way they could grow and scale their business and be able okay. to have the fruits, enjoy the fruits of their labor. So okay. that's what drives me that's because awesome. I think we've lost our center and we're busy just trying to keep the roof over our heads as business owners or as people employed with someone else. Yeah. And we're losing our kids and this is my way of being able to take some of that help some take some of that back yeah we definitely uh we can build on uh kind of lost the center and just you know what the heck is going on not just nationally and internationally but like i said we'll try to focus uh, as we're supposed to on this show lincoln lancaster county but always one of the benefits of radio is do you have a website do you have contact info for your business absolutely i do yeah. um chaos to boss com Chaos you can also find Le, yep, Lynette Sorrentino at Facebook. Okay. But and I can also be found on LinkedIn. There you go. What about the ugly motel? Oh Where yeah. Where do people yeah. get you? Where do they reach out to you, Paul? So I I'm really bad at like at starting websites and then kind of letting them sit there. But obviously the ugly motel .com. Um, you can find me at maribard.com. I don't know if she's figured that out yet. <laughs> um, also, uh, how do you spell? How do you say her first name? Larion. Larionbard.com. Larion, Larion uh, Gaylord Baird. I have that one.com. <laughs> okay. And Governor really? Baird.com. And uh, anyhow, those are all just, you know, little random Easter eggs for well, me. Well, I'm going to get the <laughs> sense because you've done that. Um, and I didn't know the level. I figured there's some things we probably do agree on politically. <laughs> and we probably share some of the same frustrations. Sure. Hence sure. How, how we have, I found you. Um, 
And and so we'll definitely talk about that because obviously we were talking off air a little bit maybe while you had YouTube live that uh, yeah there's a big I think historical mayor's race um, here literally right now um, but I got to be honest it's way too quiet for me yeah way too quiet yeah. for me and oh, and eight the, weeks out maybe if that well I mean you got the primary in early April mm -hmm. and then you know one candidate on the conservative side right, right. will will go um, and then May so is the final I mean it's lickety split quick and I I would just say that given what I think is at stake right um, which is safety and security which is you know legitimate use of taxpayers dollars you know right. with real infrastructure and I would also say, um, you know, the culture of the city, right, which is I have always said Lincoln is a balanced city for Nebraska politically. Right. Um, but the policies that have been being thrown out and when you look at the electorate right now, it's about 85 percent Democrat. Right. So I, I have never felt since taking this job that our government locally is really representing all of the people. Right. And I fear that it's taken on a national level democratic agenda. Right. And and I suspect as a small business owner and someone who's another small business owner who coaches, there's been a lot of effects and you're asking questions too. But to me, the darn race is too darn quiet. Yeah, yeah, there's, no, mean, there's nothing going on. There's no, there's, there's no, there's no rumblings, there's no gossip, there's no, there's no, Again, I've invited everybody. So this is what there's billboards. Yeah, there's billboards. Um, <laughs> That's so about it. I've messaged both personally, Suzanne and Stan, said, "Hey guys, let's do a Facebook Live." Um, and again, probably YouTube Live because it, sure. it, it blocked me. Facebook did, so whatever. I don't care. We'll do YouTube Live. Um, but anyhow, let's just do something and ask the questions. What do you support? What can you actually change? Um, why are, are you better or worse than our current mayor? And what's does, your vision? What's your vision? Yeah, exactly. As any business owner, what, what, what's your end goal? What's your plan? What can you actually do for the people of Lincoln to save me money, you know, or to grow my business? You what, know? What's in it for me, Mayor? What are you going to do? Or, or what's in it for my kids? Because, yes. again, now I'm raising a family here in Correct. Lincoln. And, you know, it's one of those things that, again, during the whole shutdown, it, it was one of those things where, our child care got literally um, cut off. Um, they literally said, sorry, we, we don't know if we, you have to pay for it, mm -hmm. but um, you, you have to figure out your own child care. That, that made life chaos, but it made us put a really close eye on, okay, well, what's this one teaching? What's it? Oh, well, there's, what are they actually learning? You know, I want them to learn their ABCs right now. <laughs> what are you doing? So again, totally different topic, totally different thing, but what can whoever wants to be mayor, what can they do for me? And why are they better or worse than the can than than you know Stan or Suzanne or again Bard? Um, maybe Bard is great. Maybe, I, I mean, you know, whatever Baird. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you can say Bard. <laughs> I just like to say Baird because somebody will be all upset at me for letting you get away with that, yes. even though you're a private citizen. No, I. Right? <laughs> yeah, trust me, I've said a lot of different things, uh, nicknames for our current mayor. Um, listen, I I think Lincolnite struggle in the small community when either someone like you who's a social media personality, somebody like me that's on air, when we are expressing frustration, satire, or just general dislike of right. the policies, right. and everybody here thinks it's personal. Right. And I'm like, it's not personal, it's just business, right? right? Like, I don't agree with, you know, us pumping money into the green energy deal we're doing. Right. I don't agree that we've become a welcoming and belonging citizens city just magically at the same time that we have the worst immigration two years in the history of America, right? Right. I don't agree with what I call the uh, gaslighting around the police when, one, I can talk to the officers, I can pull the numbers of crime, right. and I can pull the manning, right. and it's factually right there, and yet my mayor goes and says, well, I've added 30 new jobs, and the next, the week later, the police chief stands up and says, "We're down a hundred officers." Right. Okay. So, again, we're My a small. We're a small community. Well, what's like and what's Lincoln becoming? And I mean. to your point, with the two conservative candidates and then the mayor, who's the incumbent and well supported in this city, you do have to get out and show a difference. And and what will you do differently in the case of the conservative candidates? How is your vision different? And I just think right now, oh, well, I mean, here's the way I looked at it. Lincoln conservatives have gone about a way of doing business for mm, 10 to 20 years. 
and from my optic, it has helped lead to this situation that we're all in. Yep. So if those people think they're going to continue to do that and it will be successful, I think it's a terrible mistake on their part. 1,499.3-K-L-I-N. Definition of insanity. Right. Well, you yeah. keep going. We're on Facebook Live, we too. If you're, well, off the, all and four I think people. that that's part of it, right? So there's, there's culture difference now in the Republican Party that wasn't there in the past, right. and it's national. Right. I mean, uh, for my own sanity, I had to uh, um, just name it uh, Freedom Caucus and GOP establishment. And, and, and so that plays out nationally. Um, it plays out locally here. It's played out at our state party on the conservative side. Now, obviously, Democrats are just watching this going, oh, right. God, they're tearing themselves right. apart. But it does matter in the way, and I would love for you guys to talk about, in the way that the politicians try to go get the vote. Right. And I have said since I took this show and I dug into it all, conservatives in Nebraska at all levels are so woefully behind in social media. And it, it has nothing to do with censorship and all of that. They just have not engaged and it's almost as if their advisors, and no offense, because I know we're live, right? Um, to people that maybe are 50, 60, or 70, right. but that the battle space today well, you want to is hear social media where you distinguish yourself from that other candidate. Right. And there has been so many stories, both media and on social media, right. from in the case if I was running for mayor, right. that you could just hammer your opponent. Exactly, and, yeah. And, and yeah. Nebraskans yeah. don't do that, and it really bothers me. Yes. <laughs> because we're losing... Well, didn't we the, just talk about people having degrees in marketing right. before you came in? People having degrees in marketing... Well, I don't have a degree in marketing, but I've been in sales for 30 years. Right. Yeah. What that means is... You go find your target market, and you go market to your target market. Right. Right. Where is your target market? Right. right. Well, and I think, too, I think some of the party over the years, and in Lincoln in particular, has been a little bit inbred. I'll just say it, you know, meaning it's its own little sewing circle. Yeah. And, and when new ideas come in, um, clearly whatever was being done hasn't worked, or we wouldn't have 85 of 100 elected right. officials Democrat. Because right. we have, a, honestly, the voting log says we're 60-40. Uh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So if every yeah. conservative goes out and votes, you don't have this problem. Yep. So you're... You're not reaching your constituents. You know, the messaging is wrong or you're right. getting shellacked. Right. And, yeah, I guess my whole thing is it's, it's just been awful quiet. And I'm sure there's going to be big attack ads on TV, this, that, and other thing. Well, here's, but, here's the really fun thing, okay? So, um, again, just solely to get the conversation going, I like to post things just to see. And, right. And so... I've noticed that things get blocked. So again, so I... Showtime. Uh, oh, showtime. Okay, can I keep going with the same idea or... Yeah, we'll, we'll, ju we'll jump back in. Okay. All right, we've got uh, Paul Holt uh, from the Ugly Motel on today, as well as Lynette from Chaos the Boss. Correct. Chaos, Chaos the, 2 Boss. Chaos 2 Boss. I love yes, that. Chaos 2 uh, Boss. Two of my favorite words, boss and, and chaos. Uh, they often go hand in hand, but you don't want them to. Um, second segment, we'll definitely get in. We just got about two minutes here. We'll definitely get into kind of this mayor's race and or just local politics and thoughts as you guys have observed it as really just private citizens. Right. You know, um, but uh, I think we've hammered it again but it's awful quiet to you as well isn't it yeah this race yeah yeah it's nobody knows what's going on and again so if you look at my face so if, if you look at if you follow me paul holt on on facebook okay 4.5 thousand followers not a lot for you know most people whatever but um but if you look at it it should show up on your feed if i show a picture of anything else or if i show any other post then it shows up right but if it says anything political in the post it gets buried. It doesn't really? show up. It doesn't show up at all, and that's what's really frustrating. So I did. Wow. I did two different versions of of a post just to test my theory. Right. Mm -hmm. So I just edited out mayor. I edited out names. I edited out Democrat, Republican, or whatever. You know. And again, my thought here is get the conversation going. Sure. Let's at least start some sure. buzz about yeah. this because nobody knows that we have a big deal coming up in like what a month, two months. Yeah. So um, it's going to make a big deal for Lincoln. If anybody cares enough to know about it or like start talking about well, it. Well, I would say two things, two things, and we'll come back and expound on this a little more because I, I think it's interesting, which clearly social media has leaned left and censored right thinking. Right. We know this, right? This is fact. 
Um, what's interesting is how deep down does it go? Meaning, are local races in Lincoln, Nebraska, by a private citizen being censored by the algorithms? That's a big deal. Local to know. posts by right. a, by a private citizen, right? Yeah, that, yeah. That's a big deal. So we'll talk about that and more. But yeah, we've got to get this mayor's race going. Fourteen hundred ninety nine three KLIN. Well, that's not only interesting, right? Because you tend to think of, okay, the big stuff. Right. But, of course, algorithms and the way it's set up, right. we don't know yet. And I've always thought, well, if they're doing it there, right, by censoring it down at the lower levels, right. it can even have a bigger impact, yep. right? Because there's not as many votes, yep. there's not as many people. And so that's interesting. And, you know, I mean, tons of my friends are censored every time they've talked bad about China. Uh, real quick, what was the other thought you were? you were on there it was social media oh and then just getting the race here here's my thought i think this race is so historic because when you look historically at democrat controlled cities there's a tipping point right and once it tips it can't come back right and i'm so frustrated because i think that lincoln is at that tipping point yep. and so that if it if there isn't a good hold them accountable right. type of at minimum in the in the not only the mayor's race but future city council over the next five years right I think you could just write Lincoln off to the, you know, the Chicago or the Portland of, of the Midwest. I, got, I really do. I got the rudest thing to, to say to that. And so I'm really happy about a really stupid decision <laughs> that, um, so again, this might be, well, this I'm sure is extremely controversial. So everybody loves the idea of bringing this bus station downtown, right? <laughs> and so. <laughs> oh, Johnny and I know I a lot about that. I am so excited about it because that means it gets out of my Northeast Lincoln, right. you know, so. That means that the drop-off point for everybody that's trying to come from everywhere else, you know, that isn't flying in, that it, they're no longer going to be wandering the streets. I, I have some videos that I haven't released just because I, out of respect of the of the new police captain of, of Northeast Lincoln, I think the guy's doing a great job. Um, but there are some interesting people that wander off the bus station, you know, and they walk to the closest place, and sometimes they may or may not be wearing clothes in the middle of the winter, and it's crazy, you know, it's like, oh my gosh. So now that's going to be your downtown Lincoln. Now that's going to be what you see at game day. And great for, if that's the plan, if that's the plan for downtown Lincoln, has anyone thought that through? I, I don't know. but Huge lobby for that. <laughs> um, as, as we know um, on this show, I mean, we had a guy almost every day calling in about that. Um, certainly, I mean, you need to have a transit station. And I don't have a problem with that. I'll go back to it's, it's deeper than that, which is we are inviting homeless and other people into this community. Right. Now, there's a a fine line between benevolent outreach right. and outwardly just bringing in people as a beacon that no matter you know if you're sick dumb and lazy right, right, right. we'll take care of you right and so part of it i think is that you have people that are wanting i mean stumping for free transportation saying come to lincoln nebraska we'll take care of you right and then you have that transit station and the people you are seeing then come out well then the the police says well these are mental ill people so right. we can't do anything right and you now all of a sudden have a citizen problem yes right yeah because we're not enforcing the laws that we could yes we're not getting the people the help they need yes and we're bringing them in in a capacity with a transportation system that can get them all over the place. And the question is why? What is the benefit to everyday Lincolnites to have two and three or four layers of things that enable these people to essentially just live off the government and exist? And, and I would say, yeah, there might be some communities that want that, but I would say the vast majority of Lincolnites don't want that. Right. Well, they just want to help the people that you know are down on their hard luck, right. but and not it, not. And it's spun and presented like, oh, that's a good idea. Those poor people, we want to help them. But you, but and, and but people just take that. Well, and yeah, they don't think and go. They don't think and well, go no, deeper. But, they just take the. Well, there's there's things. people that want things to be a certain way because you know you want somebody to be taken care of. You you know you genuinely have like a desire to help people. Correct. Correct. And, uh, and then there's people that are actually trying to help people, but that gets really ugly. It gets really difficult. It, it gets messy. They end up 
taken advantage of yet. And so then you have to learn these hard lessons and then you stop doing it. But again, there's 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 facilities, there's churches, there's nonprofits that take care and try to help out those people. It's, but they, they uh, yeah, they're stretched. And if you try to take it, if a normal person is trying to vote their way into a good conscience, it, 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 it's not going to it's not going to be the money's not going to be well allocated, I guess. That that's just that's my thought on that. Well, and then you if you add into that with rising homicide rates, rising violent crime, yeah, right? What's going on with Lincoln? We got a shooting every other day. Right, these things are not independent. Right. Right. And, right. and again, you know, hell's paved with good intentions. Good intentions, right? My son living at 14th and E, we can't wait. We're trying to get him out of there as soon as we can because he said, "Mom, I used to hear gunshots, you know, every once in a while, and he goes, every night I hear gunshots down there. I grew up at 15th and T Street, and that was nowhere near that way. I, I know. I, not it, at all. Well, and again, it, 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 it's a slow change. Again, Havelock used to be the rich part of town. You know, it, it got absorbed, and now it's not. Well, before it got absorbed, the stories from the old timers that come and tell me about the old days, you know, they tell me that it Havelock was, was, a, it was a railroad town. Okay. It was, it was rich in railroads. Okay. Well, I, you know, and obviously I'm a conservative, but the reality is, is Lincoln's just going to be balanced at its best. You know, it should be a, you know, a majority for a time here, then a majority. Yeah. But we're not there. Right. We're, we're and I don't think people realize the impact of voting for the mayoral campaign. They hear so much about this, the national election, and they think that has such a big right. impact on them. They don't right. understand the impact of a mayoral well, campaign. Well, and it does stink that our mayor race is off cycle. Right. You know, what right. would be good is that Lincoln's elections were aligned with the national elections, right. so that really hurts. It makes it really easy to keep in power. I mean, we have an election every year in Lincoln, Nebraska, yeah. every single year, given the way the system is. But that's still not an excuse. I mean, conservatives, it's not. It's not. again, have a majority, so why aren't conservatives voting? You know. <laughs> All right, folks, uh, we're back. Second segment here, two concerned citizens. Uh, interesting people, Lynette and uh, Paul Holt are on uh we're just kicking around we're really gonna try to focus if we can uh i think many of us well at least Sorry. paul and i are add there's no doubt about it uh but we've also got some of the texters in you know uh people are are hearing what you're saying paul and, and lynette you know um frustrated with essentially just kind of democratic uh good stories feel good pictures but right. what are you doing for us right, right? people oftentimes poke to me about um, crime because, hey, I, I cover that a lot. I think that first and foremost, uh, my tax dollars should go to a safe and secure city. Right. Um, I would say second, um, making it conducive to folks like yourself, which is small business and, and things like that. Because, you know, we got in these huge debates over a couple of bills uh, last year. And some of the justifications were because, oh, we want to bring Amazon in. We want to bring this. And what people don't understand is that comes with the culture. Right. Right. Lincoln, Nebraska's culture is small business. We've got some great upstart tech companies, but we've got industry with like Kawasaki, uh, Lincoln Industries. I mean, railroad town back in the day. I mean, so that culture is still very much Midwest. Right. right. And it focuses around small business. And when we think or I hear people talking about how great would things would be. If we brought in West Coast major businesses, which, right. oh, by the way, we're going to change the laws because they won't come here if we do that. I say, yeah, stay out there. Right. I don't want you here. Mm -mm. Right. I no. moved here for a reason. Right. Correct. And so anyway, we were talking. You guys are both shocked that the mayor's race is so quiet right now. Yep. I yep. mean, even between 100%. the two conservatives, you know, and I believe that this is a historic race. I said this earlier, which is. I think that, you know, if there's not pushback from conservatives, I think Lincoln will just go the way of most Democratic towns or cities. And I don't think most people would like that in the end. And, and I'd like to extend again. So uh, open offer to both Suzanne and, and Stan. Um, let's do a live Facebook or YouTube feed type thing. Just give me your opinions. Why are, what, why are your thoughts useful? Why are they going to be better than our current system or whatever? and answer why are they relevant, you know, and let's just get some conversation going. I would assume that you also extend that to the current mayor, but I'm, I, I I'm almost a hundred percent sure she won't do your show. She, well, just like so she won't do my show. I've, I've invited her several times. Um, and I've been turned down several times and, um, 
I, I do know uh, from rumors that she has watched a couple of my of my episodes early on, so that's kind of fun. Every now and again, I do kind of you know maybe do some little pokes, jabs, or whatever. But again, <laughs> she's not she's not. Um, I mean, she had she had a hard she had a hard hand dealt to her, right? I mean, she had to be the mayor during the pandemic, and she had to be the mayor during a time where some tough choices had to be made. And I think that that is something that both Stan and Suzanne have to be able to argue against you know what would you have done differently how would you have helped small business in those situations um what could you have effect as mayor that the cabal does not control what 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 is it that as a figurehead as as the mayor who goes out and takes pictures and and is nice and you know does all that cool stuff and hands out plaques and stuff what could you actually help us with that isn't actually being controlled by somebody or some other interest you know yeah well i think you know one it's a senior executive in the city so number Number one. Number two, that person should have influence and influencers around her who are generally powerful people, both in industry, small business, to help balance the agendas for the greater good. Sure. There is always, to your point, um, if a conservative was to be elected mayor, the fact that city council will still be predominantly Democrat, right. as well as that county commissioners, so think they're your your person. You'd have checks and balances. But I, <laughs> I think that... It is more about the social fabric slash culture of the city at this moment. Why? Well, because police and the riots, right? That wasn't a controversial choice. It shouldn't have been. Okay. Nonetheless, we've lost a lot of policemen. Our violent crime numbers, our murders were up 110% last year. And, you know, we can argue about that because her office will say, you're not reading all the stats. Hey, listen. You know, the stats are what the stats are. If you want to define violent crime a certain way, go ahead. The bottom line is murders were up, robberies are up, uh, auto thefts are up, Lincolnites don't feel safe. That has nothing to do with the pandemic. Right. Now, the pandemic, to your point about small business, well, you don't have to go lock, stock, and barrel when your state right. says the pandemic's over and you throw another six to eight month mass mandate on yes. kids in school and small business owners. Right. Right. I mean, that was gaslighting. Okay, so again, that decision, the green energy, what in the world do Lincoln, Nebraska people think they're going to do to solve the carbon emissions problems? Okay, get out of that. Right. That has nothing to do with this town right now, folks. Right. And then I'll go back to welcoming and belonging. Listen, we have been, when immigrants find us and people get to Lincoln, it is a great community for them, right? But we don't need to beacon out. And right. take federal money to say, hey, we're willing to take 17,000 immigrants the goal right, year to, after year. The goal is to change the culture. Well, to my point, those things are what the mayor has done outside of the bad time of COVID. Right. Right. And I I don't yet see people like Suzanne Geis, who you were mentioning, Stan Parker, the two conservatives, telling us an alternative to that. Right. At least not on major media, not on social media, not on these stations to where that message is getting out. So I don't know who they're out talking right. to. You know, have you had a chance to even... So Suzanne came out and talked to me at the at the hotel. I loved what she had to say. Um, I've, I've done the uh, the video chat thing with, with, with Stan. Um, again, I like their... I like their ideas. I agree with their ideas. Um, again, it doesn't really matter to me what their macro ideas are because... Again, as mayor, you're not going to change any right. like major things. Whether you're for or against abortion, whether you're for or against whatever, that you can't change as mayor. That's not the problem. The the, the problem is, do you want Lincoln to stay Lincoln, um, or do you want us to continue to lose what makes it a uh, a welcoming small town, big city type thing? You know. Yeah, and I think it's interesting because I agree. Both of them have been on this show. Um, they articulate their visions, and you know, I agree. I like it. Um, you know, I think name recognition is getting getting out there. Obviously, Suzanne Geis is a state senator. She probably has a little more. You know, Stan Parker <laughs> is coming along. It depends what right. circles you travel in. I I think the problem I have with it all is the messaging is good, but in the end of the day, you have to get the votes. And the votes, as we just saw in the last uh, midterm nationally, listen, Democrats gained a lot of ground because of abortion. Not that anybody that was going to be elected would do anything about right, abortion, right, right, but the right, sentiment. Right, right. Yeah. So I have some 
thoughts or disagreements with the way conservatives are trying to politic and get votes, even in this town. Right. And they're just, in my opinion, too light. Yes. Right. So yes. I agree with you. I know that the Lincoln mayor is not going to have anything to do with abortion, but I can guarantee you that the opponent, right. the sitting mayor, is going to hammer both those two conservatives and say that they are pro-life, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. And, and so I have disagreements with the way conservatives are trying to fight the cabal of Democrats in Lincoln, Nebraska. What, what, what should be happening right now is every time that there is a, a school shooting, school fight, or whatever the heck is going on in Lincoln, and that stuff is happening in Lincoln, Nebraska now. You know, yeah. there's weird stuff. Again, there's a meme every other day now. Well, I mean, 56 and, <laughs> 56 and Cornhusker Highway, which, oh, right. excuse me, 56 and what's the new Cornhusker Boulevard? What is what is the old highway? We just changed the name. Highway 2. <laughs> Is it, well, it was Highway 2. I don't think it is anymore. <laughs> We've got a new name Nebraska for it. Nebraska Parkway? No, Johnny Cadillac. There it is. <laughs> See, you've got to say it. It's old Highway 2, but it's now Nebraska, Nebraska Parkway. Nebraska Parkway. <laughs> yes. I mean, there was a, a knife robbery at the AutoZone. <laughs> I mean, just the other day. Like, that is cannon fodder for political talk. Right. Period. End of story. Right, right. Right, right. because it, 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 it follows the stats that show... That no matter what our mayor currently is saying about crime, right, it is not what not she says up. it is. Right, not up. There, there are so many low hanging fruit that are that are not being attacked. <laughs> right, you know? there again, you go. That's it's, a great analogy. <laughs> it's, it's a frustration too because again, you see people grumble about it on on Facebook. You see people grumble about it, you know, but there's there's no actual action yet. There's mm -hmm. nobody that's actually like making it a point to talk about it, and that that's the frustrating thing. Again, I think if you get enough. Right now, there should be a lot of buzz. There should be a lot of rumble. There should be, you know, you should be sick of seeing Suzanne on Facebook or whatever. And again, yeah. so I was, you I was mean like, Larian or 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or any or any of them. Oh, you, I see what you're saying. You should be sick of just it's all the because time. Because it's there so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because again, like yeah. I was telling you. So again, no offense to uh, to uh, to Stan, but his last post, and I think I think it was a paid post, but I think I got like maybe. Maybe seventy four likes, maybe twenty four likes, something like that. Yeah, not and good enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, um, my my picture I just posted about a meme did that. You know, uh, Suzanne, hers, okay. She's getting some likes. She's getting some feedback. People are commenting. Good, that's great. Um, but then when you see what uh, what Bard is doing again, she's got a lot of people that are in her corner. Very staunch, you know, just very, um, very hardcore left and. Uh, She's not getting a lot of likes, but she gets a lot of shares. And well, she gets gets she gets support from yeah. her supporters. Yeah. I, I'll give you a number. And Lynette, think about this because I want to come to you and say, having been in this town a long time, what are some of your greatest fears? But let me say this. I did an informal study, right? I do okay. this every once in a while. I dig into numbers. And between the Democratic uh, statewide uh, chair, between their leading candidates, not incumbents, right? It's about a nine to one following across all social media platforms. So again, you know this, and I think a lot of Nebraskans don't understand this. When she or any of the candidates, including Baird, a sitting mayor, posts, that goes out nine times. Mm -hmm. Multiply nine times by every one a conservative does. Mm -hmm. So conservatives are so bad across this state on social media with the presence and with the reshares. Maybe not so much the likes at times, right, but right, it's right. just at some level it's a numbers game. Right. Right. And this is how you get the message out. And then right. you have all your, you know, whether you want to pay for bots right. or whether you want to pay, you know, <laughs> kids at the university to retweet your stuff. There's all kinds of games that can be played. Right. But I would just say to me the message is a little stalled out right now. And I would like to see it. But Lynette, I would like to see it get energized. Right. What are some of your fears as you've watched this city over the last couple of years and just maybe slowly edge Democrat? And now we're just living in a very Democrat controlled city. Well, you know, the thing I was thinking about as you were talking about people just overall with conservatives, I think whether it's social media or just in person, I think there's also become a polarization that I think a lot of the left and a lot of Democrats are just way more aggressive. Mm -hmm. And by nature, Nebraskans aren't aggressive people. And having right. been more conservative, more red, more Republican, however you want to define them, so there becomes a point where they, they back down instead of pushing back and being aggressive. Right. And you've almost got to be more like the wild, wild west and, and, and push back. And, yeah. and that's what... Um, 
makes me fearful. I think, you know, I've got kids that are young and they're getting married and going to be having kids and stuff. And it makes me fearful about the city that I live in. You know, mm -hmm. I've, I've moved away from Nebraska and come back multiple times. Mm -hmm. And I moved back here in 08 and I said, I'm here to stay. I'm here for the people, not the weather. Right, right. <laughs> Funny Gosh. we're having that on a blizzard yeah. day, right? <laughs> you know, I've lived in Washington State. I've lived in Kansas City. I've lived in Florida. Mm -hmm. right. um, lived in Colorado. Those are pretty some blue states and I didn't really see that or observe that. But there was this Nebraska work ethic, the way we take care of each other, the way we, you know, shove each other, shovel each other snow, the way we yeah. do things. And what makes me fearful is we lose that and people forget to be kind to each other right. and nice to each other because there's the people on the left are just so many people just seem like they're so angry all the time. Right. Well, they have a they have a lobby, if you will. They have a mechanism of which they've uh, done politics over the last ten years that is very angry. Whether it whether it be um, how they uh, boycott and put pressure on abortion to, or you know pro life places, whether it be Second Amendment, whether it be BLM, whether it be the riots that occurred around the nation and how they were characterized, it doesn't help that m major media tends to lean left. But I think to your point. Listen, folks, nobody is telling conservative Nebraskans to stop being that. And I'm sure a, a, good, the name, conservative. a, a good <laughs> bunch of Democrats are actually like that. They have a better mechanism for messaging right now. And what we're saying is, is if you want to maintain what we have and continue to grow that and not be crushed by the other side, you're going to have to fight for it. And that that isn't a mean thing. It isn't. You know, go after the low-hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. You know, explain why you're frustrated and how you would use money to get more street officers or how right. you would pare down our all-in on green energy, so to speak. You right. know what I mean? Saying, hey, it's not that I don't believe that we have to have alternate fuel. Because, again, a mayor's not going to do anything about that. Mm -hmm. However, this mayor has really made a lot of hay putting those policies out there. And the question the people and other candidates should say is, hey, but it's not right right now. And so we're going to use resources in other areas that are more important that we can. And I think, you know, to your point is I don't know if it's part of the reluctance to get in, maybe because, you know, I, I never heard the term uh, never Trumper until I came to Lincoln, Nebraska. And and then I heard it, and I was like, well, he's the only conservative candidate, right. so do you want Hillary Clinton to be the president? Right. And, and I, was, I, was, I was really thrown off by that. And I think because he was so, you know... Polarizing. Po polarizing and, and bull strong on that stuff, you move it down a little bit. Carrie Lake uh, in Arizona is a similar type beast, right. but not quite as... Yeah big time on it as President Trump was. And so my point is you see a lot of conservatives on the national level that are fighting, right. that are doing well. And I know Carrie Lake didn't win, but my point is her influence is huge. Right. And then here in Nebraska, we just have these conservatives that pop up on election day and you're like, who the hell is that? Right, right. Like, right. who is that? What are they going to do? Well, yeah. I mean, do have I done my research? And I think... You know, they're doing a disservice to conservatives, to be honest, in this town by not attacking. Right. Mm -hmm. You get, know, and I fear that it's going to affect your business. I fear that it's going to affect your business and all of our kids. Mm -hmm. And one day, five, ten years from now, that's it. We're just Portland or Chicago of the Midwest and a university town. Well, and again, that, it, 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 it and should be almost... that label. Well, who wants that label? It, it, yeah. It should be ran almost like a small business trying to do a social media campaign. You should see at least at least twenty posts. Oh, at, at least twenty posts about what you're specifically selling. You know, again, it, it should be one of those well, things there should from be, one of them. <laughs> there yeah. should be a repost of any time the mayor goes on TV and it's political fodder or low hanging fruit. Right. There should be a repost and an attack and a here's how I would do it. Right. And it's never done. Right. It's it's amazing to me all the all the stuff that pulled out to another place in our country mm -hmm. where conservatives are fighting for literally their values. And I just, I'm like, well, we'll see. I mean, maybe conservatives will show up. I don't know. There's still some time left. Maybe they'll come on your YouTube channel. <laughs> maybe they'll listen to us here right. and uh, they'll get after it. We'll have about two minutes when we come back okay. and we'll finish up. Uh, we'll give some final thoughts. Make sure uh, you tell people where, uh, where to find you guys. 
and uh, we'll just keep going. This is good. Common people talking about common city problems. 1,499.3 in. Drive time See, I don't. I stand for what I stand for, and I and know what, what I know in business. Mm -hmm. Paul had a nudge me a little bit to come because I said I really don't know that much about politics, but at the same time, if you don't like what the hell's going on, if you don't speak up, then you right. can't complain. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. You, know, you don't have to know about the politics. Parts. I mean, that's what all these machines that are getting paid all this money. I mean, to do are right. supposed to be figuring out. However. To learn more, it's it's fair, and I've always said on this show, listen, if citizens don't speak up and don't get active and at least, thank you, though. You know, peacefully and legally putting pressure on our politicians, well, then our system doesn't work. Right. right. Because the truth is, is they work for us. Right. right. And right now they're trying to earn our vote. And, and, and there are some that think that, you know, that they're not working for us. Well, I think, I, you know, they're dictating down to us. And some of it is, again, the mayor, our police chief, all those, they're, they're coming from the East Coast and, or the West Coast and we're getting, and they were very well trained and we're, yeah, we're being I mean, forced fed their Kool-Aid. Yeah, and, and there's been a lot of people that have bought into it. Um, and, you know, certainly the, the kind of demographics we have in Lincoln with the university and stuff, Again, that's okay. There's a 50-50 split, but it shouldn't be domination. Right. No. And, you know, one of the things they'll say, because I talk to them, is, well, you know, conservatives have all the federal stuff. Right. Well, I mean, they do for now. Right. When I grew up, they did. Democrats controlled the governorship and a lot of this stuff. It doesn't really look like you know a lot of I mean? conservative plans are going out right now. I see a lot of spending going on. I see a right. lot of random things. I'm not exactly right. convinced I mean, that they're not on the that, same team. I would say that, yeah. Gosh. Another level, right? But certainly at the at the lower level, right, conservatives across the state are taking a lot of heavies from schools to, you know, small county boards to school boards across the county, you know, to Lincoln. And, uh, and make no mistake about it. I mean, from the Democratic apparatus, they don't want to lose Lincoln because this is their gem. Right. This is the one thing they can brag about across the state is they've got Lincoln, which when you look at it that way means the conservatives should be attacking even more right because you have an entrenched yeah. group um and i think you know part of the the trouble with the conservatives at this stage they're all up and coming right okay. some have been sitting for a while but they're still up and coming they're afraid sometimes well you also have a very hardcore establishment that doesn't want to give up power either right. or care enough to actually show up <laughs> yeah all right folks we're finishing up the show here uh Real interesting show, just kind of common thoughts by common citizens, really. Uh, Paul Holt from the Ugly Motel uh, and uh, Lynette from Chaos to, to Boss. Chaos, Chaos to Boss. Um, Paul, thanks for coming in. Any final yeah. thoughts to, to fellow citizens or the mayor candidates? Yeah, let, let, let's start talking about it. Again, if you want to keep Lincoln, Lincoln, if you want to keep it feeling like the Midwestern town that you want to raise your kids in, um, then now's the time to make that decision before we become Chicago, before we become L.A., before we become some other place that doesn't exactly hold the same values that you moved here for or lived here for or grew up with. So, Yeah, and people can find you at The Ugly Motel YouTube, the, uh, Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not exactly political on The Ugly Motel uh, YouTube. It's just more or less just our story there. Um, Facebook post a little bit, a little bit political. I'm not exactly really hardcore right or left. It's just you do like to throw barbs. You said that, though, <laughs> and I like that. I mean, that gets the conversation yeah. going. Yeah, you're you're welcome to follow me on on Facebook, YouTube, uh, the Ugly Motel, or check us out there. So, yeah. And Lynette Chaos to Boss. Yes, sir. Dot com. Correct. Any <laughs> thoughts? Uh, what you'd like to see out of the mayor's race or your fellow Lincolnites, and to energize and just. What I want to see as fellow Lincolnites is a little bit what we said, you know, while we're in commercial break. If you don't like where things are, then you have to do something about it. You know, that's the definition of any sanity is, is doing the same things over and over again. And we all need to take our own personal responsibility and go out and vote, educate ourselves, know what's going on. I think people just treat things, treat all this too passively and just say, I don't care. I don't think yeah. it'll make a difference. So, you know. Paul's gonna. Paul's good at his barbs and nudging people. Yeah. You know, I'm just gonna say, 
we have a lot of people in this community if they would just go out and speak their voice. There you go. It can't be said any better. That's your uh, American right. Go out there and hold our elected officials accountable. 1,499-3-K-L-I-N. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Fun. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Fast. Mm-hmm. Or it seems like it does. How do I end this? 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 How